in our series of catching up with great University of Tulsa athletes through our wonderful history. We are joined now by Jill Barrett, one of the all-time great softball players at the University of Tulsa. And Jill, let's, let's just catch up then. What are you doing right now? Uh, so right now I am, um, well, no one's really doing a lot right now. I would say. <laughs> I am, um, before, you know, coronavirus hit, I am a high school coach um, here at Fayetteville, Arkansas, um, and I teach health during the day, go coach, um, but, you know, teaching, coaching, I do some lessons, you know, I just, I've always been around the game of softball, and hopefully I can stay around it for a long time to come. So being from Greenwood, Arkansas, then coaching at Fayetteville is a natural for you? Um, some of the coaching aspect is, some of it um, not so much, not I was never one for the empathy and sympathy, so I would say the girls probably, uh, you know, they, they think I demand a lot of them, um, but it definitely is something that I've transitioned into well, I would say. Well, Jill, it's awfully hard to live up to some of the numbers you put up at the University of Tulsa, of course. Uh, you hold four different records at TU, uh, career batting average, number of at-bats, hits, and also runs scored. Any of those you most particularly proud of they're all great records um i would maybe the batting average um or that's the one that i paid attention to i guess most some of the other ones i don't i guess i didn't even know um but the batting average i was always um if i'm gonna do something i want to win at something i want to you know do the best of my ability at whatever it is it doesn't matter if we're running sprints or you know, picking up the most number of sticks, I want to do it, um, and I, I want to be the best at it, but um, I remember coming in freshman year, um, and I just remember seeing Kaylin Everett and Samantha Cobb, Lauren Lindsay's names, you know, all up on, so in the locker room, there's a record board of a lot of things. I remember their names were all over the record board. I remember thinking, oh my goodness, like, I want to be up on the record board. I want to do things, and so um, that's, that's some of the things I strived um, to do there at TU. And in your final season, you set a single season record for batting average, 461. What, what was going on there? I mean, you just, you just really were locked in. Yeah, um, it was crazy. Um, so a couple things about that. I remember Coach Jay coming over to me and was like, you know, with Caitlin gone, she was always our leadoff. And then I, you, typically I batted in the two hole. Um, he was like, I think we're going to move you up to leadoff. And I was like, oh, no way. Like, I'm, I'm the two hole. You know, that's my spot. I was comfortable there. Um, but of course, being Coach Jay, you know, he is always right. Um, <laughs> yeah, he laughed. Um, and so, you know, I took that leadoff role, and I remember him coming over, you know, maybe halfway through the season, and he was like, See, see what happens when you're in that leadoff spot. And I remember joking with him, I was like, But Coach Jay, like, think of what could have happened if I was in the two hole. We could, like, we'll never know what could have happened. Um, but it was fun, it was definitely um, a good spot for me. Well, Coach Barfeld certainly taught you a lot. And one thing that he did one year, and I think this was during the Lauren Lindsay years, was he figured out how many extra times you would hit in that leadoff spot. So you probably got a few extra ABs in the leadoff, right? That's, yeah, no doubt, no doubt there. I remember, um, and this credits to our nine hole, you know, when I was playing, um, Haley Henshaw was our nine hole a lot of times, and she would turn that lineup over more times than I can count you know, getting us back to that one, two hole. But um, no doubt Coach Jay definitely, I mean, he's very smart, very, you know, articulate about things. And, um, you know, if he had a plan, it was, it was for the best. Jill, it's very easy to look at numbers and batting averages and runs scored and all of that. And those are uh, definitely uh, numbers that were tremendous. But one thing a, a lot of folks may not remember about you is how good defensively you were and how you took pride in your defense. Uh, speak to that a little bit about, playing third base your first three years and then shortstop your final year, how important defense was to you? Right. Um, I remember coming in again on that record board. Um, you know, Chrissy always prided us on defense. Um, you know, they're always either in the top three in the conference on, you know, their defensive um, percentages. And we wanted to maintain that. But Chrissy, um, you know, she oversaw all of the infield work, which was where I was primarily or always. Um, and so I can remember, you know, doing some brutal workouts, but she instilled that, um, that toughness for, you know, those four infield spots on us that nothing was going to get by. Um, we were going to do our absolute best, you know, play to the top of our abilities. 
there on the infield. So um, yeah, I spent three years there at third base. Um, and then my senior year moved over to shortstop. Um, I thought I could, you know, shortstop had a lot more mobility, a lot more, you know, plays that they could make. Um, but I loved my time both at third base and shortstop. There was a little bit of difference in that shortstop. You got to get rid of the ball probably a little bit more quickly. So there was a little bit of an adjustment for you, wasn't there? Oh, no doubt. There's an adjustment. So actually, um, my senior year when I did play shortstop, um, we had someone that was in that shortstop role and I was over at third base and a couple weeks before season, um, you know, she quit and they were like, all right, it's you, you know, you're going to play third, you're going to play shortstop. And I was like, oh boy. So that first weekend, I remember the very first, you know, first day I made two errors and I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be a long year. Um, but you know, stuck with it, ended up being a great year for me. Um, but no doubt, definitely a lot of, um, differences that you have to make from third base to shortstop. Jill, all four years that you played, you went to the NCAA tournament, but let's turn to that senior year. That was such a special team, 53-9 and nine on the year. I believe you won both the league and the league tournament championships, and then, and then you go to Baylor to play in a regional. What do you remember about that and how special that team was? Um, that team, first off, um, you know, with our record, with our teammates, we were so close. Um, you know, on any team, you're going to have groups of people, you know, separate groups and everybody – but I really feel like we all gelled very well um, together. We headed down to, um, to Baylor and I remember thinking like, absolutely, like there is no doubt in my mind that we can win this regional. Um, we had some stellar pitching, you know, behind Amy Kreger. She would have been a senior that year as well with me, Caitlin Sill and Bailey Irwin. Um, you know, no doubt I was like, oh, we, we can definitely take this regional and um, you know, we, we went toe to toe with Baylor. Um, we just we made it to that if game. We just ended up, you know, a couple of runs from the other side. Yeah, and in that uh, first game against Baylor on the final day, you go to I think ten or eleven innings, and Amy just does a terrific job for you, getting you through that. But she didn't have anything left, and Caitlin had to take over in the final game. But what a tremendous effort that was by the team to get to that final, as you say, the if game. Right. Um, and in that, that game before the if game, you know, um, I remember it was maybe ninth or 10th inning and Erica, I can't remember exactly when she came up, but um, hits a towering home run, you know, put, to push us over um, to win that game. And I was, I just can remember thinking like, oh my gosh, yes, like we have this in the bag, you know, one more game, we got it. And in your other years, is there any of the, the, the previous seasons that stick out? I know your first two years you had to bang against the OU wall down at Norman and unable to break through there. And then there was one year, I believe, up in Lincoln. So anything about those other NCAA regionals that sticks out in your mind? I would say for all of our regionals and any, any game that we ever played, um, we always had – a chance to win. I never thought we went into any game thinking, um, you know, no way we're gonna, you know, we're gonna win this game. Even as the defending champions, you know, playing Oklahoma, I thought, you know, there we can do this. Like, there's no doubt that, you know, with Amy on the mound or Middlebrooks on the mound or whoever was on the mound, that we could score some runs, we can produce some power, um, and we can take some of these games. And I, I thought those were some of my favorite games, just because being that smaller school, being Tulsa. Um, you've got a little bit of that chip on your shoulder and those are the games that I love to play just to prove, you know, how, you know, how good we were and prove to everybody else that we could hang in there with any of them. Catch us up to date with the pro career that you had. I think it was two years with the Chicago uh, or with the uh, Akron Racers and then one year with the Chicago Bandits where you won a championship. Was it three years total? And what was the, the pro experience like uh, in the National uh, Pro Fast Pitch League? Right, so after um, Tulsa, I got drafted in the, into the MPF um, from the Akron Racers. So I spent two summers up there in Akron, um, up in Ohio, and um, I loved it. You know, the, you take out the school part of um, college athletics, you know, having to go to class, having to go to school, and you get, you know, the, the pro fast pitch league. But it's, it's awesome I'm competing with, you know, the best players in – that have came through the college, you know, college rankings and that are in the NPF. Um, it's a dogfight every single game. There's no easy pitchers. There's no easy hitters. Um, every single person deserves to be there. So yeah, I spent, um, spent two years there in Akron and um, actually my last year there in Akron, um, Amy Kreger, which also played at TU, 
Um, she was on the racers with me and I believe she played three seasons as well. Um, and so we, we just got to, she was my roommate as well, but, um, we just got to, you know, become closer and, you know, form that bond. And then, um, my third year, my last year, I got traded to the Chicago bandits and we won the, uh, the Coles cup is what they call the championship series. And we ended up winning that, um, and bringing it back to Chicago. Jill, one of the things that we didn't talk about as far as your TU career was uh, the fact that you were an All-American, and obviously you got a lot of uh, accolades as far as the league is concerned. That seemed to be a given every year for you, but to be an All-American, what did that mean? Um, I would say that is one of um, my most memorable accomplishments that I had at TU. Um, I can just remember, you know, my sophomore, junior year, I did well. Obviously not well enough <laughs> to be an All-American, but I can remember just thinking like, dang, I, like that's one of the things that I want to accomplish before I leave TU. Um, but it's so humbling, all the people that, that received that award. I mean, you can go through the list and they are, they're phenomenal. Um, and I didn't have, you know, a lot of people that are All-Americans have a lot of power numbers and that necessarily, um, that wasn't necessarily me. I was more of the average type um, hitter. And so just to be nominated for that, um, you know, at the shortstop position was one of the highest honors, um, you know, that I feel like I could have. Another accomplishment you had, Jill, before you left campus was, of course, getting your degree, I believe, in exercise sports science. What did that mean to you and your family? Right. Um, getting my degree from, you know, the University of Tulsa was was a blessing. Um, I love school. So actually, after I got my degree in exercise sports science, I stayed and I was a graduate assistant there at TU and I got my master's degree in education. Um, but I tell everybody all the time, um, you know, if, if someone would pay for it, you know, I'd go back and get my doctorate or something. Um, I love school. School um, came easy for me. And I love the studying. I love to learn. I love to, um, you know, always continue that higher learning. Um, but it was, it was definitely um, something that I wanted to accomplish was getting my master's, so. Yeah. Back in your time in Greenwood, Arkansas, you played five different sports, including bowling, which you picked up your last year, the way I understand it. But uh, mm -hmm. what people might not know is you actually kind of like volleyball a little better early on in your career. Is that right? I did. Um, so actually, I did play all five sports in high school. Um, bowling my senior year so my softball coach was also the bowling coach during the winter and he was like hey why don't you come bowl for us and I was like okay so me and my best friend we tried out um, and she actually didn't end up making the team so I was like oh my goodness but um, and so I stuck it out you know it was bowling but um, yeah definitely volleyball always came first for me um, I can remember Growing up, we went to all different kinds of tournaments everywhere for volleyball. I actually, um, I committed to a, I verbally committed to a D2 school in Kansas, Pitt State, um, for volleyball. And so um, then my junior summer got recruited by Tulsa, you know, Coach Jay and Coach um, 2K, Kren Kumar, um, were out in South Dakota. And um, I decided, well, you know, Tulsa's D1, I'm going to go D1, I'm going to play softball. But yes, I ended. I actually played slow pitch growing up. Um, I didn't actually get into fast pitch until um, days. Well, then let's add one more uh, sport, uh, Jill. Baseball. You played baseball for the national team, uh, the national uh, uh, women's team. And uh, that had to be a very special, uh, really special time for you and also maybe a little, little bit of adaptation, I'm sure. No doubt. Um, when, so actually there was three of us from the University of Tulsa that went on to play baseball um, and now four. But um, when I went, it was me, Sammy Cobb and um, Kaylin Everett. We tried out, we all three made it. Um, and there were definitely some adjustments, you know, the leadoffs, throwing. I, I couldn't get over throwing with all four fingers as opposed to, you know, just the two on top. Um, but a lot of adjustments, but playing for the national team, um, it really, it really was one of the most, you know, fun experiences, one of the best experiences I've had, you know, around sports to represent your country. Um, we, we went up to Canada and played in the, um, the Pan Am games and we, we ended up getting um, the silver medal to Japan. But um, just to be able to represent your country and all the people that have supported you along the way, knowing that, um, 
you know, that they had a hand in getting you there. Um, that was just really special. It was. And taking you back to your family, obviously you had a very athletic background in terms of your family life. Your dad was a baseball player and your mom was a volleyball player. I'm sure they both taught you different things. Oh, no doubt. So dad, um, we're always in the yard playing, no matter what it was, I can remember being maybe seven or eight and he's throwing the ball up as high as he can, you know, making me catch it, always going out and playing. Um, mom, she did, she played volleyball in college. And so we practiced volleyball in the yard. And then they actually both coached me in volleyball growing up um, until I was 15 or 16. Um, but I mean, it's a family affair for us. No doubt my brother, you know, he played three sports in high school as well. Um, we, when we go home now, it's always a competition. It doesn't matter what we do. It's always going to be, um, you know, a competition between us. I can remember not too long ago, my dad and my brother came up and we had an entire day full of games and we kept like a point system and, uh, ranked each other for things. And then at the very end, I can remember, so my brother's six, five, he got all the hype in the family. And he was like, well, the last, you guys didn't even play the last game. And he, uh, he said, the last game is to jump up and touch the ceiling. Like, and then he, you know, obviously he can do it pretty easily. And I can remember, um, you know, I, I had to try 10, 12 times and they were just laughing, but that's just the type of family we are. We're always going to, you know, compete against one another, but also be each other's best friend. And your younger brother's name is Easton. And I presume named after the bat. I'm just guessing here. <laughs> that is correct. Yep. But he's your larger brother now, right? Then. Oh, yes. Yeah. So he's 6'5". Um, he played, you know, he played baseball, football. He was a quarterback, um, played football, and then played basketball um, in high school. And that's what he wants to do as well. He wants to coach and teach. So kind of following um, in my footsteps a little bit. Well, you have a great family background. And I remember uh, during one of your seasons, Coach Barfeld had some special games going on. And I think it might have been wiffle ball golf or something like that. And guess who was dominating it? It was the young lady from Greenwood, Arkansas, that plays all those different games, right? Right. Um, that's, I mean, I think that just Coach Jay and I, I think we have very similar personalities. And sometimes uh, we would get after each other a little bit, you know, whether it was him on me or me on him, we always challenged each other. Um, but yeah, I think we played, um, what did they call it? Maybe tennis golf or something. But you had a tennis ball, hmm. but you played with golf clubs, and they would say, you know, all right, well, we're at the library at TU. Now you've got to hit the golf ball and you've got to hit it to the softball field and, you know, to see how many strokes it would take you to get it onto the softball field. But, yeah, that's just some of the things that we would do as a team. Um, I, yeah, that's pretty special. And, Jill, as we wrap things up, uh, give us a sense for your feelings for the University of Tulsa and what that school means to you. Right. Um, well, Bruce, Tulsa is home for me. Um, it's, it's where I got to play college softball. It's where I got to, um, earn my degree, my master's. It's, um, it's where all my friends, where I've met them, you know, my teammates, the things that we accomplished together, the lifelong bonds that we have. Um, it's where I met my fiance. So, um, Bryce Neal is actually, so Morgan Neal was on the all tournament team as well. Um, I met her brother through her, you know, and, and the team when I was a graduate assistant. So uh, my family, uh, my future family, I have, you know, thanks to the University of Tulsa. So really, um, TU has meant, it really has meant everything for me. Jill Barrett, thank you so much for allowing us to catch up with you and continued good luck. And again, thanks for taking the time. Well, thank you, Bruce. I appreciate it.